What are scriptable objects and why are they useful? Scriptable objects at their core is just an object that holds a piece of data. And we can actually use this data to fill out information, for example, on our uh, monster card here. Now we could have uh, a scriptable object, which in uh, Godot or Gato, it is referred to as a resource. So we can use this resource to fill out all of our information for say each of our individual cards. And then we could just pass in or grab that data whenever we needed it. It, it makes the, creating things so much easier and all this in, information will automatically be filled out for us. And let's take a look at how we would uh, accomplish something like this. So what we're going to do with, with our data, we're going to keep track of our, uh, I don't want to get to the defenses on the right. All right. So our attack points, our defense points, our monster's name, as well as our sprite. In my case, I've got the background and the monster as individual components. You can, of course, have them as one individual component. And you see how we go through. We have textures for each of these things. Then our labels have this text input and we have to go through and type all this stuff in uh, constantly. Well, on our card here, which I just have my background on, um, this is going to uh, um, allow us to put in or drop in a resource for a specific monster and it will automatically fill all of this out. So we can come to our background and we can remove that texture. We can come to our monster, we can remove that texture, and we can just leave this placeholder text here. No problem. Did my mouse just disappear? Interesting, why is that? There we go. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first off, we're gonna have to go down to our file system, default in the bottom left here, right click, and we're gonna select a new resource and of course we don't have anything here uh, to go off of. Uh, but when we do this is where our card information is going to be found. Uh, for the moment, we can actually just go ahead and create a script first. So right click new script. We're going to inherit a resource and I'll call, I'll just call this card data. Now I know that's small there, but Hopefully I remember to zoom in. I can't help to that, so window is small. All right, so we'll go ahead, dive in. All right, here's our script. I'll zoom in a bit. Hopefully that makes things easier to see. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my last name. Um, and of course, if you're doing this in C Sharp, this is automatically already filled in for you. Uh, with your script name, but I'm doing the same here, card data. All right, so in this card data, we're gonna have, we're gonna have some things exported here. And some of this information is gonna be, um, let's see, we're gonna have monster. It's gonna be a texture. And again, export bar, and in my case, I'm going to have a background as a separate thing. And this is going to be a texture as well. And if I go ahead and just save that for a moment. Can't actually put that. So, uh, never mind then. So, we'll go continue, export variables. So, we're going to need an attack, which is going to be an int. We're going to need a defense which is also an int and we're gonna need a name for our nameplate there so we go with name and that's gonna be a script all right so as a simple simple part that's all we're gonna need for this information 
So now when we go to our card, we can actually right click in our file system and select new resource. And from this pop up, if we go ahead and type in the class that we put in, card data should pop up. And now we can go ahead and just give our data a name. So I'm going to call this Danger Duck. And I like to make my resources an RES file instead of a TRES, but it doesn't matter. All right, and hit save. Once you have that, you'll notice you have your resource file inside of your file. And if we click on it, you'll see in the inspector here, uh, we actually see all of those exported information. So for my background, I'm just going to drag in my background image here. I'm going to drag in my monster image. There it is. Uh, my attack, let's say he's got 10 attack and his defense is only three because he likes to live dangerously. Let's we'll set his name to Danger Duck. And we can go ahead and save that. All right, so we filled out this card data, but how do we use it? Well, we can actually go to our card here and I'm going to go ahead and add a script onto that. And just by default, I'll just leave it as a uh, card fine and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an exported variable here export var this be uh, we can call it card data we can just come you know let's call it card all right and this is gonna be cast as a card data type right the resource we just created now when we save it and we take a look at it inside of our inspector we can see we can go ahead and create a new card data type and fill that information in or we can go ahead and grab danger duck and just drop it in there and there's all of our information cool now we need to actually fill in our information which means it'll be good if we actually grab a hold of our data so to organize this a little bit i'm just going to do an export category first and i'll call this card elements there we go I uh, and export var and this is going to be let's start with our uh, background it's a background that's going to be a sprite dd i can just duplicate this because same thing different name this will be our monster export var now if you don't know about the export categories they just help you uh, organize things uh, as you see in the inspector there i have a section now called card, card elements with my background in it if i if i were to save this uh, as soon as i get rid of this error here uh, you'll see i have my background and my monster export bar and we're gonna need the tat which is a label Export fence, which is also a label, and last but not least, our name plate. Our name plate, which is also a label. All right. So now that those are set, I can actually just go into my inspector, click on assign, and just select my background, select monster, select my attack, defense, and nameplate. Now it's worth knowing that you can also just grab it from your scene hierarchy, uh, as long as it doesn't change, and then just pull it on in, and you can assign it that way as well. All right, so now we have all of those in all of those uh, nodes for us, all those card elements of ours, without having to do uh, on ready variables. And now all we have to do is actually assign this data, all right? So we can say background dot texture equals card dot background, all right? And we can go monster dot Texture, it's actually lowercase here. P script texture equals card dot monster. And we just gotta go through with all this attack dot 
text equals card dot tag. Defense dot text equals card dot defense. And our last one, nameplate dot text equals card dot name. All right. Uh, let's see, what do we get? Oh, we're getting that as an int. All right, so we just gotta cast it as a string. It's fine. Not a problem. There we go. And now when we go ahead and run this, we're gonna see all of our information get filled in. So we're gonna see the destroyer will change to danger duck. The five will change to, I believe the 10 and then the, the five on the right will be the three. And we'll have our monster filled in. So go ahead and run this, take a look. There we go. And likewise, we can do the same thing. So we can create a another, for example, I'll just go ahead and run through real quick. All right, so I've gone ahead and filled in a, another one. If I come to my game here, I can just move this card over. And I'll spawn a, another card in. There we go, to the right. And I'll bring in God o Block. There we go. And that's just because the default here is actually set. So let's just uh, remove that default. And make sure we're all good. Got old duck, and I have to reset this one to danger duck. There we go. So now when I run this, there you go. We have two completely different cards. And all we have to do is just create a new resource whenever we need uh, a new card. And we can just set that. So there's how you would use scriptable objects if you're from Unity. And if you're in if you're from Gato and you haven't used Unity at all. These are resources, and this is their, well, their whole purpose here. Uh, they hold a set of data, and we can even put uh, functions on them if you wanted to. So then you could call uh, something from your card, right? Card uh, get data if you wanted to, and you can get all that information. Or if you wanted to set uh, maybe a shader that happens to, I don't know, whatever crazy things that you guys want to do. <laughs> but there's how you would use a scriptable, scriptable objects, also known as resources here in Gato. All right, hopefully though that card example made this clear. All right, so we just go to our file system, right click, create a new script. In that script, it extends resource. We give it a class name. We create an export of all of the different data we're gonna need. And then we can click on our file system, hit new resource. Find that resource that we just created in this example, card data. Uh, give it a name and fill in that information. And now we can just use that uh, whenever we want. All right, that's it. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. If there's something that you want to see specifically or need help with, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And maybe we'll do that in the next video.